All right, so it's 8.30, I'm gonna start. We may have some people join. We are on session three, and this is uh, the nine ways a millionaire real estate agent thinks. So it's page 67 to 97. And so what he's gonna talk about in this part of the book is our big why. And um, what, what struck me, and I know both of you that are here didn't read, so as we go through, you know, I'll just point out a couple things. So on my notes, um, somebody told me this, and I didn't get it until recently, I guess, but nobody can really do the thinking besides us individually for our businesses. So all of the knowing is different than the thinking about it. And so here in Think A Million, um, Gary starts this part of the book with saying that he had vowed to make thinking an action step for himself. And I was like, oh yeah, let's actually consider thinking. All right, fine. So um, on the next page, he's talking about how he started to vision or visualize success. And so he says, work to learn before you earn. The um, learning based, you'll hear Gary talk about that all the time. And this is where he starts to discuss that. And as he goes forward, he'll say there's nine ways that he discovered. Uh -oh. All right, hold on. Five dollars at KW Cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very rude. <laughs> on page 69, he says there's nine ways. He discovered there's nine ways that a millionaire real estate agent thinks. There's the three L's of a millionaire real estate agent and eight goal categories. Okay, cool. So we kind of keep going. And um, here on page 70, he's discussing how if you set your goals bigger, he's encouraging you in this part of the book to think bigger, which will cause you to act bigger and not to just set your goals um, low. So he says kind of there in the middle, ready, aim, fire, wins over the long run of ready, fire, aim. So he's basically cautioning you not to spend so much time analyzing, set your goals and then go after them. Um, he talks down there about there's some key issues to concentrating. Um, on page 71, he talks about habits and being on purpose. So it's almost like if you guys have read the one thing, he starts to talk about some of that material in this part of the book where he later turns that into a whole book. But he's talking about the habits of your time management, being on purpose with your goals. So you guys see the diagram on 71. He says, you know, top producing agents, think powered by a big why. This is, um, you guys know what a big why is, where it's kind of what your underlying motivation is that gets you out of bed and causes you to do this job. And then he says they have big goals and use big models. And then he'll say, think possibilities, think action, think without fear, think progress, think competitively and strategically, think standards, think service. And see on one and two, it's the foundations. Mm -hmm. And then on the rest of them, it supports those foundations. I see Marjorie's on here. Earl, you're back there in your office. <laughs> you guys want me to show you on the camera? Jana Marks is here. Ruth's here. <laughs> okay, so think powered by a big why. Who's got a um, aha surrounding a big why? What do you think about that? He says here, a big why brings focus and big energy. High achievers always have a big why. He challenges us to shut the book down and take a few minutes to determine it. So I would challenge every one of us, and Ninja talks about this as well, are you clear on what your big why is? Because at the end of the day, whenever you have those times where you don't think you're gonna make it or it's hard or it's challenging, um, going back to your big why helps that mental energy. So the guy on page 73 says, at first my motivation was money, now God and family come first. So if you guys want to, I have some purpose exercises that you can do to get real clear on what your big why is. As you sit down and do that exercise just internally, a lot of us will say our you know, kids or retirement, security, um, maybe there's something that you want. He goes on to say, um, go to page like 74 and 75. Gary's having a conversation with someone in this part of the book about their big why. And um, 
Gary says what he determined about himself down there kind of at the on page 75. When I wake up every morning, my big goal is to do my very best, be my very best, grow as much as possible. So I have my notes on this part of the book to say, then how do you reflect that on your calendar to be your best? You know, that's not really a activity. That's where bold will say, be, do, have. It starts with who I want to be, and then I can figure out how to go about doing that. And he's saying in here to get in touch with what really motivates you. He gives an example of um, some agents really, and this was true for me, the negotiation part of the business was a really, really love, I miss that part now, of problem solving and figuring out solutions and getting parties happy. And um, I mean, I'm going to say a little bit like winning the negotiation. I'm a, a, That was uh, inspiring to me. But I love, love, love the negotiation side of the business. Then he goes down in, to the service side where some real estate's like nothing better than providing exceptional service to their clients, handing them a key to their dream home. So that big why of, you know, legacy is worth leaving. I'll use that one sometimes. Um, what is your legacy? Tapping into what that is. If you guys don't have a clear big why. Does anybody have a clear big why? It's something that we all have a little bit of a struggle with. Ruth, do you have a clear big why? And it changes sometimes too. It'd be a fun exercise. Mine, mine is student. always family and making memories of my kid that will last a lifetime. That sounded good. Did you guys hear her? Did you hear her? Um, hey, Grayling, come on in. So um, making memories, say it again, Cindy. Um, basically it's all mine mine's always about family and it's making memories that will last a lifetime so it's about the memories um so how do you tie that in with your work goals that's that's always my struggle because i you know obviously i want to spend as much time as i can with my family but you can't do that unless you're putting in the i still got to put in the time in order to make that happen and I guess mine is time management and I've always tried to be better at it and, and I think everybody struggles with time management and it's you know that's always my big struggle is I get get it done so that you can have those times because I think some of the best memories are made maybe not even going out of town or whatever or vacation I think sometimes they're just made right there in your own living room well, that's true. And so what Gary's saying in this part of the book and on page 77, he kind of says, if you were the best version of yourself, he gives you a little exercise there to write down some things and then come up with your one big why that motivates you to be your best. And then he goes on to like, first, you've got to get your big why. And then um, on part two, he's talking about thinking with big goals and big models taking whatever you just said on your why and turning that into, you know, he'll love to double it and triple it. So say you wanted to give the great experiences to your family. Say you were going on a vacation and even in your own living room, how much we get done on those days when we have something powering us to get home to or something that we're planning around that big why will motivate you to do better. So he says in here, one on page 78, um, go into the next level of your success and reaching your true potential. So when I think about true potential, have I reached my true potential? What is my true potential? That's such a deep concept. And I go, well, you know, do, do we ever reach our true potential? It's not really a destination, right? It's a continuing. Doesn't he say no? You, you never you can't. Reach, release, I mean, reach your ultimate goal. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, then you would quit when you were done. You'd be like, okay, got it. You know? right. But he goes on to talk about um, it's really simple to, in order to be your very best, you have to have your goals of being the best set. So he talks about different categories, which again, he'll do really deep in the one thing book. But he starts here by saying it's, it's amazing to him how many people don't even really set true goals for their lives and to have being their best version, let's just say, of your real estate business. He talks about the big goals and big models on page 80. The person selling two and a half million, they have certain habits. The person selling, you know, 10, 20, 40, 80 million, uh, they have big purposeful habits. They're all doing the same activities. 
And what he found is the people that do it at a high level, they just plan it and are purposeful about it. So then he goes on number three. Those are like the two foundational ones. Have your big why and have your goals and models um, basically thought through, which we don't really have to think about them as much because they've already thought for us. You know, we just got to plug into them. But think possibilities. So um, he goes on to say, you know, do you think it's possible? And if so, are you taking the appropriate action to make it possible? What does have to happen? The coaches will say this a lot. What needs to happen for you to achieve X, Y, Z? Well, what needs to happen is sometimes time management. It's, it's, there's lots of things, right? So you get that list. And Gary says in this whole section of the, you know, this chapter or this part of the reading, he said, you know, he didn't get it overnight. He knew what he wanted to do because he thought about it. And then every year he just did more towards each um, part of the goals. So what needs to happen? Is it possible? Then he says, think action. Start forming a plan. If you have procrastination and you're not taking action, I'll, we'll have a whole call sometimes on what is your hesitation. Um, he goes on page 85 to say, even the best cannot rely on natural behavioral style day in, day out. You'll, not, you'll hit the certain ceiling and you'll stay where you are. You've got to be able to um, get into action, whatever those actions are. This guy on the little or on the box on, um, or I guess that's a girl, Barbara. She says, if I do the right thing, the money will be there. Well, what's the right thing? You know, you got to show up and do some things that are hard, especially at first. He talks about uh, at first in here somewhere. So thinking without fear, number five, that you guys heard of analysis paralysis, where you're too freaked out to do anything because you're still thinking about, well, I don't have a listing presentation. I could never go on a listing presentation. Um, you know, nervous wreck. I've done that stuff a lot of times. And so you've got to get through the fa the failure fears. We all have them. The best way to get great at listing presentations is go on a whole bunch of listing presentations. And maybe you don't get them all at first. You'll find that you get really good at them the more you go on them. So that um, fail forward stuff, Gary starts talking about it. He talks about setbacks will happen. Anybody that succeeded at anything, you know, didn't get it their first time. He says down on um, kind of like right before number six starts on page 87, having a big why will help you focus on, um, having a big why will help you focus on what the millionaire real estate agent usually has going for them. Power and motivation that comes when your greatest fear is not reaching your goal. So whatever your goal is, say it's to spend time with my family and provide incredible experiences. Your fear of not doing that should be greater than the pain and the hard days that you spend, right? So whenever your brain goes, man, I just don't have the energy to go lead generate or whatever, and you think back about, well, yes, I do, because it's going to mean that I'm able to hit that internal, you know, you know, see what I'm saying about the internal motivation? Yeah. Um, so think progress. Think progress is about knowledge and breakthroughs that do not come through effort and persistence, or more often than not come through effort and persistence. It's the incremental daily improvement stuff. He says on page 88, progress is about quantity and repetition. So kind of like I said a minute ago, doing it over and over and over, you're going to get good at it. I had somebody who was talking about door knocking First time you door knock, you're probably not that great at it. You go knock on a thousand doors by the time you're done, even though the activity may not be fun, you see what works, you see what doesn't, you see who, how you are, you see how people respond. So just getting and doing it is a lot of times um, that first step. Number seven, think competitively and strategically. And you guys hop in if you want to, I just know that there's a bunch of material in here, so that's why I'm going a little bit quickly through. Yell at me if you want me to stop. Think competitively and strategically. Top producers are competitive. He's Gary talks in here about being competitive is not a bad thing. They like to win usually. And um, the thinking, he's going back to that same part that he talked about in the first part of this, is that you uh, top producers are think strategically. So you've got to spend that time saying, how do I be a better one to work with than the next person. They get clear on why work with me. 
So really all he does in this part is he talks about the way low achieving people think compared to what high achieving people think. So it has to go, it goes back to believing and thinking before acting. And then you've got to act as well. He's kind of talks about it treating your business or the business itself as a game. And so there's conduct, there's ethics, there's protocol, there's, you know, how do I play to win basically? The number eight, he goes, think standards. I remember one time, I usually will have for me, uh, and I don't know, this came from convention one year. I had my like one aha that was kind of resonating with me. And this is, I think, tr just true for me. I don't know about you guys. Um, and I'll have one sort of, what do you call it, Ruth? The Raz that is just present and I see it everywhere. Like I remember Ruth, um, not too long ago, gratitude was just everywhere she went. You couldn't go past and the billboard would say gratitude and you walk in the room and somebody said something about gratitude. Turn on the radio, it's about gratitude. Like it's just that one thing that is in your brain. And um, so standards, I remember I went a whole year just thinking and thinking and thinking about standards and how important that is and what are your basic standards of, you know, how fast do you answer the call? How soon do you answer the email? How uh, often do you contact the client? Just all of those little bitty standards that we set. Well, we already have them. We just don't necessarily think about them. So you do your best, right? Well, defining them is a, a pretty good gift. And so then on number in uh, section eight, I'm on 92, holding yourself and others accountable to meeting or exceeding those levels. Has, he talks about your value proposition. So if you guys haven't done a big why, um, exercise the value proposition exercise is a very good exercise why work with me so cindy you know how you rolled out what your big why was you know just um you were able to articulate it yeah. being able to articulate your value proposition i would say pretty much don't you think Ruth? successful people know how to say why they why you would want to work with them right and it can be very simple believe it or not why work well, with me so that's an example of an articulated value proposition right. so you use what we already have and then you you know each of us is different if someone hired any of the ones in the room here we may do the exact same thing in a different way on some strengths and some not strengths right so um, he says, you'll just hear like I, what I love about going through the pages like this is you'll hear kind of like Kellerisms and things that we say, and this is where the, all that stuff comes from, right? So on page 93, he's talking about standards. He says, if you have discipline and patience when you're beginning your hiring process, how much that can increase your business. So he's talking about when you start to grow your team. And then he says, inspect what you expect. So you'll hear us say that pretty often. And even like a seller or a buyer, they have to inspect what they expect sometimes. Make sure the we have to inspect that our closing people are doing what they say and the mortgage people, you know, we expect them to do the loan, but do we need to inspect that they're doing it? Yes. That's just true for basically all things to do with our business. Make sure. So number so he's thinking standards. What is your standard of operation for your business personally and professionally? Number nine, think service. So, I mean, I've got um, circles and highlights and underlines. Why would somebody work with you? What is your value proposition? He says it's your fiduciary commitment. So your purpose. Top real estate agents have a clear understanding of why they should be hired. Here's why you would, you would work for me. For a seller, net them the most amount of money in the short amount of time with the least amount of problems. It's that simple, right? That should, you should be able to roll that off of your mouth pretty easily. So why do you want to work with me? I'm going to net you the most amount of money and least amount of time with the least amount of problems, right? You should be able to kind of, yeah, that's obvious to us. And then the buyer, uh, just the right home at the best price at the right time with the least amount of problems. Great surface begins with a clear purpose of why someone's working with you. Then he goes into that value proposition uh, that we just talked about. He discusses fiduciary down there on 94. And you guys see on page 95, top 10 service areas of seller value proposition, top 10 service areas of buyer value proposition. And we could hold this up to the other material that we were just talking about. And I'm sure it would be 
pretty close information. And what I love is this is completely drawn for you, out for you. Why wouldn't you just use this to start with your own plan? And then in your marketing materials for your clients and your conversations, you know, do you have this material in your stuff? Because it's right there for you. And the only thing Gary did was study what people have. And one thing that's so nice for us is we all share. So um, make sure you grab that and have that available to yourself. On page 96, he says the difference between a functionary and a fiduciary. This is great language that you could talk about if you were looking at Zillow. Why would someone buy a house, sell a house, whatever, through Zillow? compared to you. This is where you can articulate why. The difference between functionary and fiduciary is um, something that's really not too hard to understand, but sometimes hard to articulate. In that part of the book he discusses, um, I remember during the last housing crisis, which was about 10 years ago, we really talked about how so many agents were in the business and did not have developed their skills really. They just kind of could throw a sign in a yard and do a sale. And that's the thing with um, like a, let's just call it like a robot could do, right? Uh, anything with no skills could fill in a contract, right? I guess on their own. And then the agent who we are has the skills to the knowledge, all of these things uh, that he lists here that'll cause you to be excellent in your field. So it's that pursuit of excellence. Nice material there on page 96. What do you think about that, Cindy? She's my star student. <laughs> um, I mean, I I guess you know I don't know I still I don't know I still I just struggle with getting I don't know, I struggle like everybody else does I've been in this business for a long time I should probably be more successful at it I think um, but I think that. I think my biggest struggle is still, yes, I know what my why is, but I have to program myself to think about that every time I think I can't do something or that's not possible for me to do or, because I think, I mean, I think I struggle with, you know, self negative talk to probably just like everybody else. Well, we all do. Is there anybody in the room who doesn't? <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna show you who's in the room. There's Grayling, we got Jana, we got Claire. I don't know who got back, back to back. <laughs> Everybody wave. Hi. I'm gonna point it at you guys for a little while. Um, so uh, interesting for me to collaborate and see that everybody else goes through the same struggles. We all have the same hours of the day, right? How come some people get so much more done than others? Um, this is really the basics of the book. It's why we're collaborating and talking about it. So he goes on here on the next section on page 97. Um, but wait a minute, that's where we end, 67 and 97. So really this part of the book is, what is your big why, getting clear on that. So Cindy, you've got there, you've got that a little bit, putting that somewhere up in front of you. And how do you push through that inner resistance into productivity? Anybody else have a big why? What do you think, Jana? Well, I like that you named um, you named off financial security, you know, and I think I was at one point just embarrassed for that to be a big why. It mm -hmm. doesn't seem like a big why, but yes, it is. And um, and I was surprised to hear Ruth say she didn't really have a big why, but I think I remember talking <laughs> at the, um, you know, that that event center and telling your story about how you know you became a, a single mom and, and how you just powered through that and i think that became your big why you might have just kind of lost well you go through changes it's like anna was talking about uh, when i lost marcy mm -hmm. it made a big difference so uh, well, if you do the purpose exercise and that comes from the one thing material, it really helps you like where he said, where he has on the, that part of the book and he says to start writing down some things. Um, I went through one time where I was with a couple of other successful agents and we couldn't really get clear anymore. We, we were kind of in a funk, we were calling it, like we weren't really looking forward to the clients anymore. And so for me, as I did the exercise, 
I realize that contribution. So it could be the contribution of the negotiations, the contribution of handing them the keys. My word contribution was what came out. Okay, then how do you define contribution? Well, now I know I was on a path to become team leader. At the time, I didn't know that. It was an agent. And what does contribution mean? And how do I articulate that? And how am I providing, you know, giving someone else my legacy, because I don't have children, was to contribute. How do you, at the end of your life, say you did contribute? Mm -hmm. So then I had to go through some exercises defining that. Mm -hmm. Gary does a whole full sentence exercise in the One Thing Materials. But what gets you out of bed and motivated? And money is nothing wrong with money. What can you give back if you have enough money, mm -hmm. right? So what kind of contributing could I do if I was rich? Lots. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Contributing to my own household, contributing to, you know, security of not needing to work when I'm 95 or something. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot that it's, it's kind of deep stuff that we have to think through. Mm -hmm. And that's basically this part of the book is thinking. And that's tiring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've done enough of that for one day. So you guys work on your big whys. Let's, I want to hear what they are. So um, I'm going to end the session. I got another class starting. I see those of you who did not talk. Hi, Marjorie and Earl. Hey. And we'll see you next session. If you want to know your homework, <clears throat> you got to read. We will go into the three L's next time, which is 97 to 118. All right. See you next All week. Right. Well, next week's Red Day, so I'll send a little thing about when our next session is. Great. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.